Smoke signals from around the campfire. Greetings from frozen Buckinghamshire in Ooh. England. Ah. Good to see so many joining. Devils. And good to see um, quite a few faces I've never seen before and presumably come from Elevate and other places. Good to see Kay here from Peru. Good heavens. Just waiting for a few more to join. Have you have you mentioned? I don't know if it's top secret, Pete, and I'm about to break the secret. But have you mentioned uh, the fact that you and I are meeting tomorrow to look at another venue for Camp Out 2023? Well, as you've mentioned it, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, top secret information, fully classified. Fully classified <laughs> internal document. We are meeting in the South Oxfordshire countryside. Um, I've already had a look at the venue. Um, it's sort of midway between Oxford and Reading, but it looks quite likely we'll be able to do camp out there in August. Ooh. Um, so tomorrow's meeting is obviously for Dan to have a chance to have a look at it um, and to talk to them about logistics and uh, try and confirm the dates that we've got in mind. <laughs> yeah which would be around the second weekend of August, um, probably starting on the Thursday, I think. Um, and running across Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, Dan and I need to catch up on all the, <laughs> all the logistical things here. The, the, the everythingness of it all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is Gillian joining us tonight? I can't see her yet. I don't think she is. No, I just had a message to say she's not very well at all. She didn't oh. sound very good, which is um, unfortunate. Oh, it goes. That so brings us seamlessly into opening the session, I guess. Yes. Glastonbury, yes. Was, Glastonbury was our location uh, just over a week ago for the um, Trailblazing Systemic Change weekend. Um, Julene Sadiq, who was really the main organiser of the event, um, Sent her apologies, but she's not well. Um, she did work very hard, actually, in the run-up to the event, so I'm not wholly surprised she's not very well. Um, but we had a very fruitful weekend. Um, lots of surprises, lots of um, things unfolding that were perhaps a little unexpected as well, as always happens at these events. Um, the previous winter gathering we'd done three years ago before lockdown, so this was a much more focused event where we were really workshopping um, how we could look at frameworks, how we could set up systems for systemic change. That was one of the things we talked about. Um, I think at this stage, I'd like to bring in Dan, really, because you're very experienced at running these sorts of Zooms with a lot of people. Um, so we'll be looking to get feedback, obviously, from those speakers and those attendees who are here, but also Welcome to everyone else who couldn't make it to the actual physical event. There is an online course. Um, there is also a survey for those who were at the event, which is on the campfire site, which we'd love your written feedback. We would also like your spontaneous feedback tonight. Um, so, Dan, can I hand over to you at this point? Sure. Yeah, I was thinking about this, uh, the nature of the conversation tonight before um, we jumped on and I, can't, I would like to kind of begin with the end in mind. And I had the great privilege of, um, I think, accidentally becoming the headline speaker at the event uh, on the um, in Glastonbury. And um, I very much changed the, the nature of my talk based upon what had unfolded over the course of the two days or two and a half days of being there. And I opened up my uh, talk referring to a gratitude process and I, I I would like to just invite you for a minute before we start this is for me as much as it is for you um it's a Monday um, I, I'm still carrying the busyness of business with me into this conversation and I want to make sure I'm in the right state of mind for a really powerful conversation around systemic change and to really make sure I'm tuning back into the kind of energy that I want to bring into the world and I invite you to do the same um so gratitude or appreciation or um, thankfulness is one of the most powerful 
emotions that we can possibly experience we we experience the wholeness of gratitude and fully embody the feeling of gratitude not just mentally or intellectually in our minds but actually in our heart and our bodies um and i discovered this um process called gratitude flow having watched a netflix documentary of all things about dr stutz um the documentary is put together by jonah hill uh, and Dr. Stutz is Jonah Hill's therapist. And he was so mesmerized by the work and the impact that it had on his life that he wanted to create a documentary featuring Dr. Stutz's work. And it's from Dr. Stutz that I learned this gratitude flow process. So uh, many of you, I'm sure, may have had a gratitude process in the past. If you haven't, then this is a great opportunity to learn about a daily practice that can really make quite deep and profound shifts in the quality of your daily experience by, you know, beginning your day, I would suggest, or at different intervals throughout the day, tuning back into a sense of appreciation. Because in in the context of the conversation tonight, talking about systems change, yeah, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot out there that we would probably deem to be broken or wrong or corrupt. And that comes with the associated feelings. And um, you know, I, I came into this with a busyness of business, but I also came into this call tonight with slight anger and rage <laughs> at some of the system stuff I'd been looking at in the last hour. Um, so I kind of want to release that. So this, like I said, this is for me as much as for you. So the, the, the emotion of gratitude we can cultivate by simply turning within ourselves and asking ourselves, what am I most grateful for right now? Uh, and if you've never been through any kind of gratitude or mindfulness practice, and this is all sounding too woo-woo for you, just... Be open. <laughs> I invite you to be open. I think we're in comfortable hands here. We're, you know, we, we found both at Camp Out and at the Trailblazer event that we are typically surrounded not just by open-minded people, but open-hearted and open people. These have become themes of the events that I've had the pleasure of running alongside Pete uh, and other partners. Um, so I just want to invite you firstly, just to take a moment to feel with it, go within yourself and it, Find something that you're grateful for from your day to day. Think about something from your day to day that you're truly appreciative of or grateful for. And really feel, just give yourself the moment to really recognize the thought as it comes up and be with the thought of what you're most appreciative of. And once you recognize the thought, just allow it to go deeper into your heart and to really feel that appreciation. Now, if like me, you've had a busy day and it's been stressful and you've been angry, <laughs> I hope those haven't been your default emotions for the day. But if you're struggling to come up with something specific from the day, just take a moment to tune into whether it's the blue skies that you experience momentarily today or the sun shining or the smile on someone's face or the beat of your own heart that you perhaps are only noticing right now because I pointed it out. And just take a moment to think of something that you're really grateful for, someone, some experience, something that happened that you were really grateful for today. And I just want to give you that moment to really feel that for yourself. Now, I want you to think of a second thing not necessarily from today. It could be something from your entire past. It could be something that hasn't even happened yet. It could be some, you can actually express gratitude for something that you're looking to bring into your life, something you're looking to attract. You can experience gratitude in advance as well as in, in retrospect. But this time, as you think about the second thing, I want you to notice where the feeling comes from. As you notice yourself becoming aware of the next thing that you're grateful for, I want you to feel into your body where that sensation is coming from. Where is that almost magnetic sensation that, that comes up in your body as you feel that emotion arising, whether it's in your mind or your heart, your soul, in your stomach? Uh, pay attention to where that feeling as it arises is coming from. So again, take a moment now to think of a second thing that you're really grateful for. And this time, just feel where it's coming from. And if you 
as you did that, noticed in your body or mind where the feeling came from. I just want you to take a third attempt now, this time not necessarily looking for anything that you're grateful for, but seeing if you can just tune into the emotion of gratitude without necessarily thinking of anything in particular. So having paid attention to where the sensation of gratitude comes from in your body, see now this third occasion, whether you can simply feel the sensation of gratitude and see if you can deepen that feeling, see if you can really deepen uh, that sense of appreciation uh, within your body, within your mind, body, soul, and heart. Just take a moment to feel that now. And just simply take a breath and come back to the room. Releasing anything that's been bothering you today, coming right back, really present to be here for this powerful conversation tonight about some really important things that we can discuss uh, and have the opportunity to listen and learn from many people tonight. Now, just to close off that opening section, if you didn't immediately come up with anything that you're grateful for, this is a practice. It's 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 like doing sit-ups. If you do sit-ups in the morning, you might struggle to do them at first. When you start to cultivate the practice over time, it becomes easier. It becomes more effortless. So don't worry. Don't judge yourself if you couldn't immediately think of something. You know, when we've had a busy day and you start on a call, you think your your your, your expectation, your mind is tuned into talking about something else, and then this guy comes on and starts talking about gratitude and changes the direction of the call, <laughs> you know, it, it may put us off our kilter. So if you didn't immediately think of anything, that's okay. Similarly, if you didn't find the gratitude pull, the, the flow within you, again, practice. Practice it every day until you notice where it's coming from, and then see if you can tap into that feeling more and more every single day. And every time you're having a... Hello? Anytime you're having a difficult moment, you can you can you can tap back into that. Now, um, to start us off, I would just uh, Pete, could you give me some screen sharing uh, privileges, please? Do you know how to do that? Can you? This should be a security mm -hmm. setting. Yeah, just a sec. Um... Um, while you're doing that, I, just, I wrote down on the Friday evening before we started the event, Pete hosted a kind of roundtable discussion around what people were expecting for the event. And I just I was reading the words that I wrote down, um, the feelings that people had about the weekend ahead of ahead of it beginning, feelings of excitement, openness, curiosity, anticipation, buzz, embodiment, um, deep listening, challenging conversations, um, defying the norm, uh, exploring wisdom there was all these really fascinating um uh kind of hopes hopes for the weekend that we we we, we drew out or peaked drew out in the opening session and there were some really interesting threads that came from that conversation uh, in the context of systemic change building a more human future or humane future was one of those key threads i think many of us have felt that over the last couple of years has has become a key requirement and the ability to freely explore and converse and challenge one another without fear of judgment, you know, for, to be able to sit in a room of people and to share different ideas from different backgrounds, different experiences, and, and be free to, to fully embrace those conversations. These are some of the things that came out before we started. Now, I just wanted, I was going to ask Julian to cover this, but she's not here with us. But I, for those of you who are on the call tonight who weren't with us, because we've got people who were facilitators, speakers, um, helping to run the weekend on the call with us tonight. We've also got attendees who were there in person who we'll hear from. And we've also got a whole range of people uh, on the call who um, weren't at the event. And some of you may not even know what we're talking about. So I thought I'd just take a moment to introduce you to the event. Um, so this took place uh, on the 13th and 15th of January in Glastonbury. Um, Elevate worked in partnership with Campfire, uh, with Pete's, which is Pete's brand, and uh, Julian from Musical Nutrition. And we went through a whole week at two action-packed days of key concepts, workshopping, vision, visioning, strategizing, um, embodied processes to really explore some of the systemic challenges we're facing, but really with the premise of looking to create a systemic process or framework with tools and practices that can help us to actually address 
some of the broad and holistic challenges that we're facing in the world. And when we talk about systems, you can think of systems as a whole in terms of the interconnection of different systems. And you can think of the independent systems, whether that's the education system, the economic system, the uh, political system, the healthcare system, and so on. Um, and recognizing that there are challenges within each of those systems, but there are also some broader holistic challenges. So I just wanted to give you a very quick overview of the program. And then um, we'll 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 take some shares from those who were involved in the event. So day one, both days began with a really high energy um, session with uh, Yale. Uh, so some of you who went to Campfire would have had the opportunity to go through uh, um, Yale's breathwork and energizing movements uh, sessions. She ran those on both mornings. And uh, lots of profound um, takeaways uh, were shared uh, from both of those sessions. And then we got into the, the business of systemic change. In the first day, um, Julene led the session looking at a visioning process, uh, envisioning what she described as a thrivable world, looking at what, the, uh, what, a, what a thrivable world would look and feel like. Uh, again, this is where we drew out some of the systems elements from economic system, the education system, the social systems, political operating systems, looking at what would, what, would the, uh, what would the future look like? So we had this kind of North Star of where we're heading. That was a you know, group exercise where we took the opportunity to share um, uh, the, the kind of key things that were emerging from the different groups as they went through the exercises. And then we had a brief moment of looking at how we get there. Um, that was a thread that became more prominent throughout the overall weekend. It's okay starting with your endpoint, but we've got to kind of start to figure out where do we go? How do we get from A to B? And there were some ideas shared there. And then in the second session, Jolene once again took us this time through a more theory-based um, session on how we can align our social systems with the natural systems, looking at causality, what's actually causing the root cause issues in the, in the, the various different systems, what are some of the critical action points that are going to enable us to actually affect change? And what are some of the system leverage points um, that... Uh, <laughs> it's a bit torn out. Pete, could you... Uh, if you could um, mute <laughs> some volume through from somebody, I'm just trying to... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please mute yourself. Yeah. If you yeah. Uh, and then the third session was looking... Um, uh, at uh, the international dimension. And we had a wonderful session um, with uh, Rami from Home for Humanity, where we looked at some using performance, a theatric performance, looking at some of the stories from different parts of the world. So it's a really interactive kind of journey around hearing how some of these uh, challenges have played out around the world, but how how these individuals were creating change. It was a really, really quite profound session, um, a, a really interesting way to present uh, the story, uh, but brought a really global uh, international dimension. And then we had a workshop with Beautiful Trouble. And for those of you who have been involved in activism, may be familiar with Beautiful Trouble, they've got some amazing tool sets for uh, developing tactic activist tra tactics and strategies. And then we had the opportunity to take part in a, they, they've created a set of cards, which operate as a set of, set of tools to help you develop. Uh, someone said they're like tarot cards for activism. You, you get to deal the cards and it'll, you'll choose your focus, you'll choose the tactic and you'll choose the method of operation. And it's a, it's a really creative way of exploring ideas. Uh, so we, we use that to explore different tools for activism. And then on day two, uh, Thomas, who's on the call with us, tonight took us through a critical somatic session, which is a movement-based practice to liberate the body and mind from some of the dominant narratives that we tell ourselves, as well as some of the uh, broader themes. Uh, Thomas, I'm sure will share more about his session tonight and, and what that's designed to entail. Uh, I found that personally one of my uh, most revealing sessions. Um, I learned a lot actually from the movement practice itself and how I hold my body and how I use the, you know, the different, the, the different, what the nonverbal communication um, elements that I uh, take for granted. Uh, Julianne uh, then did a session on being a social arctic, uh, ar arctic architect and leading sy uh, systemic change, um, looking at how um, the different archetypes 
that we play, the different roles that we can play in creating system change. This is bringing it back to ourselves and how we interact, how we interact with systems and how we can actually affect change and looking at the role that we play. We then had a presentation from Phoenix. I don't know if Phoenix is on the call tonight, but he, he um, presented uh, some ideas around how we can co-actualize a new system for education and social transformation uh, to actually enable society as a whole to actualize and not just uh, at the individual level. And then closing out, we had uh, a session with Juan Carlos Caton. Was Juan Carlos based in Mexico, Pete? Was he in Mexico, dialing in from Mexico? I believe so. Or yeah. Peru. I can't, I, apologies to Juan Carlos. I, um, I, I didn't catch where he was dialing in from. Um, but he shared a process whereby he's outlined a kind of 12 month map for building a movement, uh, a movement of movements or a network of networks, looking at how spaced repetition of events, uh, global collaboration, working across uh, nations to tackle some of these deeper systemic issues. Uh, he shared a, a whole range of models uh, for us to actually form different strategies for collaborating, um, recognizing that if we're looking at systems, uh, particularly in the kind of systems that we're looking at today, uh, they're intrinsically global in nature uh, and how we tackle some of those problems require us to think outside of our own borders. Uh, and then I felt closed out the session with a session on embracing wholeness um, and shared a message of live today as you wish to wish the world to be tomorrow, um, which uh, closed up with the gratitude process that we started with today. Um, and my overarching message was that we have to break down the barriers between us if we're really to create change. We've got to find a way to, um, yeah, we've got to create space where everyone is welcome and every idea is welcome um, and the possibility for us to, to converse beyond the polarities of left and right or this and that um, uh, and find new ways of communicating that would enable us to do that in order to create a common understanding of the problems that we're facing in the world. So Pete, I wanted to start by just taking a moment to kind of bring people up to speed. Apologies for those of you who are there and it's all uh, old news, but um, I found myself even going through this before we started tonight that it kind of brought me back into the room. Um, which I'd like to take the opportunity to do now. You've heard enough from me. Um, I'd like to uh, offer the opportunity for those of us in the room who, uh, um, who, who were there at the event in Glastonbury to share their experience, what were your key takeaways, what were your uh, key learns, what were some of the things that you um, have considered since that you can apply in different contexts. So. Um, it'd be really great if you can press the raise hand button, which is in the reactions. If you're on a laptop or you're on a desktop computer, if you click on the reactions button, you can click the raise hand. Um, it'd be nice to do that first and foremost. Uh, if you can't find a way to raise your hand digitally, then you can go old school and uh, you can physically raise your hand or just start speaking. <laughs> um but yeah, it'd be really lovely to hear from some of our attendees I can see across the room who would like to kick us off with your reflections. Tamara. Um, yeah, I always notice I often jump in first. <clears throat> but I always said, Dan, about um being with it, being with it all, uh, one of my major themes at the moment is to to listen deeply, more deeply, to those that I find um, on other on another polarity to myself, um, and there's quite a lot of polarization uh, in the world today, and separation, segregation, opinions, and ang angry people, angry with others who don't think the same way so I'm more and more um I find more and more love in my heart for those people and a, an ability to just allow them well not even allow them that's the sort of arrogant position that I allow them but to to not try to change them um not try to make them see things my way uh, which I quite often have tried to do in the past but um no to, just to to 
to acknowledge each person's place and uh, and that's where they are in the moment and just to listen kindly um, to those people. So this is by, and I think the Campfire Weekend um, kind of, um, I found a lot of that be between us all, uh, some with different, very different views to myself. Um, I think we found that uh, generally is the feeling of campfire is, is is that holding space with a big heart. So that's a little takeaway for me. Thank you, Tamara. Yeah, it's it's so important. Uh, that's certainly been my experience of campfire events. And the yeah, even at the even at the Glastonbury event myself, there was one or two of the talks where I could physically feel myself <laughs> reacting to the material. And, uh, but I had to go back within myself to say, I'm going to listen to this, absorb it, process it and um, acknowledge it, even if I don't agree with it. Uh, so thank you for, for raising that important point tomorrow. And I couldn't do that. I just drifted off a lot of the time, but better than, better than diving in and going, da, 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 you know, <laughs> it's like, and um, drifted off, fell asleep a few times. So yeah, that's that's one way to deal with conflict. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, not interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tamara, uh, Claire, and Ella. It'd be lovely to hear from you both. Good to see you. Hi, yeah. Um, yeah. So so we were both there. Um, I think the if you weren't if you weren't there, the the whole thing was just a space of so much um connection and like and love and i think everybody everybody who was there um really tried to connect with each other and really tried to feel whatever like other people's um opinions and i think everybody there had a lot to say me i think me and my mum were both there just to to listen a bit more but um even yeah as dan said when there when there was stuff that came up that that we didn't quite agree with. I think a lot of people help, like asked a lot of difficult questions and tried to try to see other people's um, positions a lot more and talk and yeah, talk through it. Um, Yale, Yale and Thomas's workshops were were absolutely amazing. Um, they they both like uh, they they allow they allowed me personally to feel my body in a way that I'd never felt it before, and I think. Um, There'll, there'll be stuff coming out about um, how you can personally do things and then how you can do things for your community um, and beyond. But um, personally, when you when you start to feel, as, as Dan said, gratitude and connection to yourself, then you can also branch that out further to other people and um, create the space and the, the environment for yourself to really be open to, to new things and share, share love. Um, and I think the main takeaway that I got from it was just I, I learned so much. I learned so much, and um, it felt like a real, like a real community and a real, yeah, group of people that wanted to help and listen to each other, and other people. Yeah. How did it feel? Just what I ask you a question. How did it feel being the youngest person in the room and the second? Is as a podcast host, I shouldn't ask two questions in one. It's not very professional of me. How did it feel to be the youngest person in the room? And then the second part is. What do you think needs to happen to attract more young people to conversations like this about deeper systemic change? Um, yeah, so so for context, I'm 20 years old. Um, I think a, a lot of people who are there were at least double my age. But um, um, I think at first I went into it expo expecting not to not to talk much, and I think I didn't really. I, I definitely put some views out there, and I felt it felt amazing to be like have them respected and listened to. Um, mm -hmm. As a young person, I don't think you I get that enough. But also, um, it was just great to have wisdom passed down to me, which was like main takeaway, I think. Um, and also, just have a group of adults. Uh, <laughs> I'm an adult now. I forget that. <laughs> but <laughs> have a group of yeah people older than me um, who were who felt like they were really there to support me. Um, not not necessarily me specifically but I could rely on them for support and community um and then well, sorry what was your question? Uh, what what would need what would we need oh, to yeah. do to attract more young people into conversations um, like this around systemic change this was a conversation that I was having with Julene because I think a lot of my friends would be um quite reluctant to join something like this because it's simply um a bit um 
I guess the future for young people now is looking a bit bleak and people my age, uh, quite frankly, don't really care um, about what's happening in the future. I think that's something that I still need to work out myself. Um, but I I know that if if my friends had been put in the same situation as I was that weekend with the like care and the love and the things that I experienced, I think that would that would definitely move anyone to join. Awesome, thank you. Claire? Oh, hiya, sorry. Um, yeah, that's me. Um, I, I, I both really enjoyed having Ella there and introducing her to that sort of thing, you know, like where everybody's in free form discussion. And that was quite exciting because I guess, you know, you have one to one conversations with people, but when it's really dynamic and when there's lots of opinions, it's 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 a totally different thing. And what I was really um, amazed by was the, the, the incredible richness of ideas out there. And that just if we if we were all developing everything, you know, ourselves from bottom up, that there's so many different things that there that we can do and just different ways of doing things. But I kind of still feel a bit rigid in myself and it's a bit like I, I've got so much to learn and, and I kind of feel rigid. I want to become more adaptable in my thinking and in my own sort of life and not be stuck in the habits and the rut of what I'm doing and so what was great was seeing all these different ideas and seeing lots of people around the world actually doing different things so it's this sort of giving me courage and, and, and sort of strength to kind of think there are so many different ways and we can all do these things individually it doesn't need to be anything set we can all come up with new ideas and, and just to make it happen so that was kind of the energy that I got from the weekend um, which I'm now trying to kind of put into into action but I'm finding it quite difficult because you've got to start with really small things and not be and and, and do it step by step you know patiently <laughs> that can be, it's quite tricky to be that patient you know you want to see something happening but first of all you've got to really go back to the basics so yeah I know that feeling well yes yeah, yeah. Big, big, <laughs> big vision small steps you know yeah. rem reminding yourself yeah. in those those dirty steps um i'm sure thomas may have something to say around getting out of the kind of rigidity that you mentioned as well there's again that physicality that comes with that as well as the kind of mind side of that so um we'll hear from thomas hopefully in a little while but thank you thank you both uh for, for your shares and your takeaways and it was lovely to meet you both yeah uh, lovely. at the event sam good to see you again would you like to to go next I think you're muted, Sam. Yeah, 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 I'm just poking the button and it's not doing anything. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How lovely to see you all. Oh, it is really nice. It's like coming home. It's like stepping back into the room of joy. And um, okay, so it was for me, I loved the global quality. I said it was like being on the best geography field trip I've ever been on in my life. Um, because of this idea that we absolutely embodied the system change within our own bodies and our perception with the work we did with the art and the work we did with Thomas. And also the environment we were in, like that view out over the Somerset levels. And I don't know if you've heard on the news since we've come home, but it turns out that, you know, all the pumps are ready at their Somerset levels, but their highest point they have been since 2013, where it all seriously flooded and they're all ready. You can see all the pumping stations are ready to go and they're like, it's not going to happen again. And in a way, that's a reflection of the system change, like of a system that sort of like is looking in advance of itself and taking precautionary action rather than the damage that was done in 2013 in the Somerset levels. And that alone, I hadn't realised until Jim was there and saying to us, oh, this is the worst we've seen. I just thought it flooded like that every year, you know. It's like, oh, no, no, this is the worst it, we've seen it for many years. So the geography within which we were within and the sacred space which we were in, because we were, we were realistically probably about a quarter of a mile away from the tour. Um, I think that was a really dynamic reflection of this incredible international flavour of, of this amazing journey. We took a, you know, trans-global trip around the world where we had Kurdish music from, you know, sort of displaced yet replaced and rehomed humans being asked to speak in their own language and us welcoming that, that with great like interest, uh, a sense of differentness and the same, it really did bring in this real depth of humanity 
I loved the international zooming out to equipment to Mexico for opening closing ceremonies of fire ceremonies and seeing that actually what we were doing there was exactly as we do in Avery on the when, no when, I found when, them yeah. <laughs> yeah you might need to meet are you okay yeah. Um, yeah, just the, the fact that it's exactly the same ceremonies, honouring the directions, the beings of the directions, the qualities, just bringing right back to now with that moment of focus. A really, really beautiful work with Juan Carlos. I loved the internationality. I did feel like it was the best geography field trip I'd ever been on in my life. It was actualised in the space we were in. And then it wasn't all in our heads. It was like we were allowed, we really moved. And even the food and the kitchen table, you know, we ate together and somehow every little bit everybody had brought just seemed to make these harmonious meals that <laughs> Brian he sort of just gently threw out for us and this warmth around the table, the conversations were rich all the time. So there was this, there was no point I felt a disconnect and one of my greatest take homes was about the breath constantly being this circular breath and there's no break. And in that, that, that sort of kept going on and on and on and on, a sense of connectedness. But the more we breathe, the more we move with that lack of judgment and relax more in our body, the more we keep that circular motion and keep working on that and seeing our stuck points as we do that in our personal lives, then that is systemic change and that will resonate out from where we are. And I, I think that that for me was a really powerful take out that, that, that wholeness, that not having the disconnects and when the disconnects are there, being willing to recognize them, talk about them in a loving and kind way because the weekend was full of love and kindness, listening, care. I came away, I was glowing again. And uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed the internationality and the seamless Zoom technology, it was so cool. I didn't feel a disconnect in any way, actually, from, from being in, in that room to being at the table to being in, in New Mexico or uh, Bern or wherever it was we ended up. It was beautifully, beautifully curated and connected. So connection was my thing. That's thank, you, thank you, Sam. Great to hear you again and great to hear your experience. And just to clue people in, in terms of as you're hearing these stories, I perhaps didn't make it as abundantly clear as I showed the programme, but you know, the whole event was set up for us to look at how do we create individual flourishing, societal flourishing, and then planetary flourishing, looking at the links between ourselves and how we operate in the world, our connection to the society and the wider uh, humanity, and then, of course, our relationship with the Earth. Uh, so it's looking at all of those dynamics um, and how they interplay. Um, you know, those who are part of the Elevate community will know I talk about being the change. You know, I, I've hijacked Gandhi on that one, but this is simple. It's a simple uh, message, really, is that we we are society. You know, a society is nothing more than a, a set of individuals, and humanity is a much larger uh, set <laughs> group set of groups. Um, and you know, finding that finding that shared sense of humanity, that was one of the intentions that came out at the beginning on the Friday night. So it's been lovely to hear some of those threads uh, and experiences. Yeah, I'll come to you next. You patiently got your hand up there. Lovely to see you again. Thank you for the amazing uh, morning sessions. Best coffee you've ever had. I said, you know, when John Rogers, uh, Dr. John Rogers said uh, he wasn't sure whether he's going to attend in the morning, I said, uh, I don't know if you're a coffee drinker, John, but if you are, this is better than any coffee you're going to have. You'll wake up more invigorated than you would any form of coffee. And I stand by my word. Uh, so over to you, Yale. Thank you for your amazing sessions. Uh, thank you, Dan. And uh, it was amazing that John and Vern, his wife, actually made it to the sessions. Um, I'm I'm actually wondering whether if if I were to yeah I've got you all on gallery so I can see everybody which is amazing. Uh, so I just want to share a few things, um, and I've written it down because it's a week and a half ago. Feels like ages, and life moves on, and life is full, and. Um, so uh, just acknowledging the genius uh, present in all of the presenters, the gifts and the genius, and the genius and the gifts in um, everybody who attended and really kind of noticing that 
tapestry. So um, I, I always love to be in the witnessing of that. Um, I found it very, very inspiring. Um, for, for me personally, I only receive what I'm able to receive in the moment. And I'm always very much in the trusting that I will receive the exact right thing for me. And I never know what it's going to be. Uh, always present with miracle consciousness in that. Um, and uh, who was it who spoke just before Sam? Claire, it was something about natural time. Everything is in natural time. Um, that, that would be my words for something that you said. Um, I, I reached my capacity in Phoenix's talk and um, I desperately, desperately wanted to stay for your talk, Dan, but I just couldn't. My body went into complete shutdown and, um, you know, that was it. It was like, right, driving home now in the light and, uh, you know, desperate for home. So I missed that. Um, I really want to acknowledge Sean. Uh, there's something about him in the, um, yeah, just in the invisibility and his, his amazing temperament in that. And in fact, the, um, you know, the acknowledgement of the temperaments, Pete, also, uh, you know, Steiner temperaments are always present for me because that's uh, my children went through that type of education. And that brings me on to um, my what what actually happened the day after I was teaching. I have many, um, many uh, strings to my bow and I was uh, teaching my choir lessons at the Acorn School in Nailsworth, which is a a Steiner Waldorf inspired school that my children went the whole way through. So I teach to the upper school from 13 to 18. And I was teaching the group of 13 and 14 year olds at the end of the day. And one of them pipes up, oh my God, I would never be a teacher. I think it's the biggest nightmare. You, you know, we are a nightmare, you know, teaching children, worst thing. And I stopped and I looked at them. And uh, it's like, no, I think it's an amazing thing. And I felt so inspired from the weekend to share um, uh, really, you know, what I don't know is going in that goes in and then I'm able to share it. Um, and, um, you know, just to share my, my love for them and my hopes for them and how amazing they all are and what qualities I see in them and um, you know that my hope for when their adults and their children are at school that you know maybe school won't even be needed in in 30 years if we have the paradigm of our you know deepest dreams and desires um, who knows but anyway, I just wanted to share that that what I received on the weekend came out in that day and actually fueled um, really every aspect of every moment in my week last week. So thank you so much. Lovely to hear. Thank you for that. I think it's so amazing to hear the stories of kind of the ripple effect that's created in people's lives who attended. Um, one of the things I've been contemplating about the idea of systemic change is it's, I think people have a sense that it, it's a topic that's reserved for others and that it's for, you know, the institutions of the world to think about. Whereas actually, I think one of the things that was demonstrated over the course of the weekend is that the, the change we're wishing to see is in our hands and, you know, the way that we live our lives it does create that ripple effect we become role model leaders uh, julianne talked about the the archetypes of change and actually leadership you know lead we didn't actually run a single session i think that was explicitly titled leadership but really every one of the sessions including your own were leadership teachers as peter said uh you know different different ways of us educating and informing ourselves so that we can make a difference in the world around us. So yeah, very lovely to hear your personal story. Thank you for that. Um, Kate, uh, good to see you again. Let's uh, hear from you. 
Yeah, it's funny what emerges as other people are, are talking, isn't it? It's like that thing around our place, each of our individual places. It's like we're lots of eyes at the minute, and then maybe we group into like a little group that are also eyes. It's this thing about moving beyond being the individual change to um, and being islands of activism to how we actually connect together as well. And like the, the, the word that, that has stayed with me um, and the feeling of that and the experience of the weekend is borders. And it, I, just, I just feel like, um, as other people have said, it was just a space that it was a safe space. Um, there was love in the room for sure. There was, um, it was a space to share when you felt uncomfortable about things. So there were sort of, you know, for me, some things that got challenging and everything, and then being able to actually talk about that and then find other people feel that. And I think that was very much a, a beautiful thing with campfire in the summer as well. It's like, we're all feeling these feelings, these sort of challenges. Um, but but with the, with the, the borders thing, it's, it's the borders for you, you know, like to your interconnectedness with all things, to like being there for your you, being the kind person for you, to enable you to be in the world and do the work and make the connections and everything. So it's like, it, I was just, it's like layers, 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 these borders, these, the home, a, you know, the starting point, the hyperlocal, the, the local, the regional and all of that. and um, and the opportunity to like be curious and look for the connections like what Tamara was saying around you know we get into these polarized places but it's like the curiosity to find where, where's the link where you know and and another thing it was like and I really feel this and I I do it it's like the thing that every conversation counts it's I, I, I've sort of laughed about it a bit it's like about having a cult <laughs> You're finding every way in a cult to love, <laughs> a cult to our interconnection as as part of nature and the planet, and the the ap absolute um, urgency to to come together. So it's like, how are all these eyes becoming different ways, and where are those nodes? Which, which is like you know um, very much what Julen talks about the sort of nodes of opportunity to like make things easier for ourselves by doing it together rather than you know we I, I think the way our whole system is caught up even when we're doing things that we're desperately about making a difference we get we get into difference between different groups and all of that so it's just like the layers of how this happens on a what a micro and macro meso she was going on about that I love the fact that there was just the mixture of embodied work and and brain food as well <laughs> um and i have to say that uh you know the uh, yale session that first morning i was a bit jangly on the drive down and it's you, i don't know if you know sometimes when you, oh, you you're sort of stressed out about something and all of that and it can actually impact on how you take everything in and it, it was just like that process that it just had gone so it was like it was a a blank slate to sort of receive reciprocally receive give and, and, and all of that so um yeah so the, another thing that um for me you know God, that was really beautiful it's you know we've we've we're building a tribe in Hull for sure but um you know there was an acknowledgement that it's it can be a lonely space this space um and actually being with people in, it just felt incredibly important to come together with people to sort of be able to feed you to come back home and and carry on with what you're doing back home. Um, and there were all sorts of, yeah, I'm connected into all, you know, I think we've all got our extended networks, haven't we? And it's how all of these things connect. There's something that I hear a lot that I feel a tension with and it's like, oh, we'll be the network of networks. And I, I'm in lots of different spaces where people are going, we need a network of networks. And it, I, I spoke to Jelen about this. It's like, we need to be a network. <laughs> the nodes are the interaction point. It's not everyone doing their network because that's more of the same. <laughs> so that, I think that's an interesting thing thing to, to explore as well. And, and, and for me, you know, I'm really interested in what next. So it's like that process and then what the sort of training that, 
additional training that comes out for this it's like how that can we can bring that back into our local communities as well so I've already been I've previously been talking to Juliana to you know sort of link looking at some work linking to some work I'm doing in Hull and everything but uh, yeah it's like how do we continue that sort of learning with each other trying new things experimenting I I I, I really believe that we're so we're so sort of groomed into like being reductionist and just seeing what's here and and not feeling the interconnections to everything I think having experiments to actually enable us to feel the system and see how your me as I everyone thinks they don't have an impact on anything but it's all the eyes are having an impact on something so yeah, I'm interested in exploring that. I'm interested, you know, the archetypes that Jelaine came up, I thought were uh, really interesting again, and like actually doing some more work at exploring that further um, would be really good. Um, yeah, I'll shut up now, but yeah, it was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, Pete. Uh, yes, thank you for mentioning kind of the, the heart and mind, the brain through the strategy, as well as the embodied piece, because um, I, I think we've heard these lovely stories about how um, how people have taken these into their own lives and the impact it's having. And it's it's it's, it's almost the indescribable things that, that occur within us. when we go to these experiences that, that manifest in our day to day lives and and. The reality is that the event, as Julian described it, you know, she said this is an experiment. You know, it's 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 a it's a new way of creating processes, frameworks, tools, and that's ultimately what it's about. So that we can actually take these things that we actually went through together and you know use them open source within our communities. You know, these are these are tools for change. Um, but then the strategic elements as well. You know, your point around the network of networks. You know, how do we actually build? a network you know <laughs> rather than multiple networks networks and you know all of the different points around acupuncture points and leverage points and the different ways to actually influence change all the tactical elements that there is so much practical stuff that we can actually put into practice on the individual and systemic level um that that uh uh using these tools and practices um Thank you for your share. Now, is there anyone else that was at the weekend that would like to share? Thomas, you're obviously one of the practitioners from the event. If you'd like to share, we've got a few others here. Um, it would be lovely to um, also hear some questions or re reflections or observations from those of you on the call tonight who uh, weren't there. Um, you know, those of you who've been drawn here from either the campfire community or um, the um elevate community um you're obviously here because you have an interest in systemic change it'd be lovely to also hear from you i've just been made aware that jeff you had your hands physically up so jeff i'll come to you in a moment thank you for that um i've got my i haven't got my thing on gallery view so i can't see everyone at once um so yeah for those of you who have joined tonight from from our respective com communities lovely to hear from you as well your thoughts and reflections uh, Jeff, I'll come to you firstly, uh, and then Thomas is uh, going to offer a contribution as well. Are you Jeff, there, Jeff? I'm muted. I'm muted. Hello, I've unmuted myself. Hello, hello, everybody. Nice to see you all. Um, Hi, Jeff. First of all, I'd like to say again, thank you so much to Julie, who isn't here, but it was an amazing event. I can see she put a lot of work in um, prior to it, having a little bit of interaction. I was involved in, um, well, living at the farm and at the, the time it's going on, I'm still here actually, and was able to just facilitate and help between the farm and the event itself. And, and for me, it was just a real pleasure to have my friend Pete and I at the farm with all these amazing collaborators in 2023. What an exciting year we got ahead of us. So much work, but so much possibility. And I really felt that so many threads of young and old people all combined in that space, in that magical space, as Sam said. 
you know, in Avalon, where there is this kind of very strong thing in Glastonbury that if you kind of do an event, even more energy comes from it than normal. That sounds whimsical, but it seems true. The earth energies are strong. At Paddington Farm, we always describe as the yoni, that's not too rude a word, for the lands around there. And it's got the spine of the goddess behind it, leading to the tour, Paradise Lane. So it's steeped in that kind of Glastonbury magic. So to host an event that was very practical and grounded at a place that is Pannington Farm, that has children from inner cities coming to it. And the room we were in was, or is, a recycled building that the, the event was held in. For me, it was a, it was a kind of um, consolidation of what the farm means and the event. It was a perfect, you know, it's a perfect place for this event. I really like a lot of Duleen's ideas around the archetypes, about adapting archetypes, which are kind of universal. And one might say I'm changing at core, but adapting them for modern times, for activist purposes, or for just creating a better world as we make it up, as we go along now. And I feel also as someone who's becoming an elder in the scene, so to speak, and seen a lot of things come and go, just how much inspiration and energy there is now in a multi-generational kind of thing that's building. And I know that was talked about by Pete and others prior to the event. And I, I haven't read the books yet, <laughs> but I probably will soon. And I really also like Dan's thing at the end was particularly moving for me as a man and I said this at the time Dan talked about grieving and particularly at the moment as I work with men and male initiations at this time in my life I feel that that's something that's on often men we find it hard to speak about in public you know in a mixed group so thank you Dan that was deeply emotional for me at the end of a, a weekend that was a roller coaster of ideas. And I was busy coming and going, but I took most of it in. Thanks also to Pete for the inspiration behind the event. And again for Sean, because he's like one of the other quiet backbone, as Yale said. Yale sessions I didn't attend, but I felt the energy. <laughs> I was quietly doing my chi gug as I do. So my heart was deeply moved, but also my intellect and the sense that um, well, Rani's work, of course, and her amazing theatre things, fantastic. But, you know, her work really inspired me too with the Homes for Humanity, which I didn't know much about. So for me, having been at COP recently, coming back and people in England quite dispirited, it was a wonderful bit to be at an event with all this energy that was multinational too. And that was a really important thing for me personally um so roll on 2023 you know i feel very inspired by the event thanks everybody and let's do it again soon and next time if we ever do anything at paddington farm together i'll offer a sweat lodge and, and you know an actual fire outside we should do it and see the lands and it would mean it would put things into much more context for everyone that comes and involve probably like a seven hour slot in the timetable. So that's just a thought there and an offering for the future. Good idea, Jeff. Having well, been having been part of one of your sweat lodges in Froome after the camp out, uh, I can wholeheartedly recommend them as life changing, really. And yeah, it's just what we need an extra seven hours in the program. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Thank you, Jeff. And you know, <laughs> thank you, Jeff, and thanks for your kind words. You. Um, Thomas, you had your hand raised. Yeah. Yeah. You like to share? Yeah. Great. So, first of all, I'm really grateful for the event and that I was invited to come. I didn't know what I was coming for. It was very interesting, and oh, I didn't know much. And it was incredibly warm, warm-hearted. It has a wonderful feeling of community of different generations, different cultures coming together in a fairly small and family-like event. And 
Um, so so it, was, it was very comfortable. It was just very comfortable and, and heartwarming to see people and people working together who want to make change, who are hungry for change, a bettering of themselves and a bettering of the world in a kind of critical, gentle, collaborative and um, systemic work, systemic way, really, looking at the local and the global, looking at the personal, looking at the social, looking at the political. So that's, that was really great. I mean, I've, I've worked for many, many years in, in mainstream education and in, in higher education for 35 years and, and very much with um, visionary colleagues in visionary departments who, 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 who were all up for making change. And um, I think the proof is in the pudding you know, in terms of what we're doing is, you know, how do, how do we formulate our ideas? How do we, how do we embody these ideas? How do we test these ideas? How do we live these ideas? And then how do we apply them? How do we, how do we apply our visions in a world that resists the visions? Because the world, mainstream culture, mainstream 2000 year old patri patriarchy and capitalism and, and exploitative cultures, Eurocentric exploitative cultures, resist these visions. They resist them. And, and if, if we can't step up and find ways of um, grounding our visions and applying the visions in, 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 and, and testing them against resistance, it's, it, it has no meaning. It has no meaning if it just stays in Glastonbury. Glastonbury is, is, you can open up a shop and call it Witchcraft Emporium. And you can up, there, there are, I, I, I think I saw probably 10 shops that were selling mostly crystals in Glastonbury, 10 of them, all in the same street. So, so you know, it's, it's, it's nice to set up another crystal shop there. But it, it you know, what's, what, how do we sow the seeds of goodness in the territory that is 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 resistant and is is difficult and um, and in some ways for me this was really great to come to come to a very gentle environment. I've been often working in a very rough environment where there was a where there was a lot of resistance and where where you're there sometimes alone or you have to kind of sneak through and and and, and do your radical events somewhere on the sidelines or do, do, you know, find a way of tricking it. But, you know, how do we apply all this? How do we apply our ideas? Um, systemic change is nothing new. The Tories, the Tories are all systems thinkers. The CIA and, and, and the CIA developed systems thinking. Systems thinking was developed with Gregory Bateson by, a, by, by CIA funded, with, with, with CIA funded money. Yeah, it, it was big American corporations and, 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 and um, the, the, the industrial military complex of the United States that developed systems and funded systems then. They funded SLN, they funded, they funded esoteric thinking as well, uh, to, politically. So, so, you know, we're not the only ones who think, thinking systemically and working systemically does not necessarily mean it's good. It's, the, it's our good intention, our ethics, our awareness and our our criticality and our gentleness that that makes it good and and our ability also to step back and and question our own position yeah? um i'm super inspired to to i'm super inspired to 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 see myself as part of a bigger picture and to see myself to see myself as part of a bigger picture on the planet and as part of nature and and to see how we can develop models of education, develop models of being with each other, which are more humane. I'm not, not a great fan of humanism anymore. I'm more post, a fan of post-humanism and, 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 and um, new materialisms that look at the, 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 the living systems overall and that, that you know, of, of, of seeing ourselves ecologically. So very beautiful to have this, this, this tribe. And, and a place perhaps of belonging that's, that's important for new ideas and visions. So thank you very much.
Thanks, Thomas. I, I have a question for you, actually. Speaking about the resistance, it's such an important concept. You know, whenever the, even the even the word change will upset some. You know, the idea that we're changing the state, the, the, this it's a threat to the status quo. Uh, you know, visionary ideas is synonymous with disruptive, uh, and these these concepts can concern people or cause a reaction. But I'm curious by the very nature of your work, and you, Thomas took us through a very powerful movement-based somatics exercise, um, and maybe you'd perhaps share a word or two about the nature of your work to give those who weren't there the kind of context around your experience, but how you can use those types of practices to actually phys to, to physically experience that resistance and move beyond it, because for me, this wholeness idea, dancing between the dual and non-dual breaking down polarities, finding ways to actually open the container for more people to, to engage, even if they disagree. Because over kind of the kind of weekend we curated, we weren't there for long enough for the depth of conversation that would inevitably lead to greater, deeper differences. You know, it's almost like the forming, norming, storming, performing in kind of leadership studies. There would have probably come a time where disagreements would have erupted and it would have needed processes to hold the space and I feel like you're maybe not you know maybe maybe the way it was curated actually mi minimized the, the potential for that but but I know that there were disagreements around certain things across the weekend so how can the type of work that you do help us to actually model some of that resistance and navigate because the resistance usually shows up within us as well as you know within others so could you tell us a little bit of how yeah i mean i tell you a little bit of, of some of the things where i come from i mean i'm i work partially or to a great extent with a system called the feldenkrais method which is a somatic practice a somatic practice is a, a practice of embodiment of of self-sensing of a kind of first person related um or first person organized a movement practice which aims to focus on autonomy, self-directed learning, um, self-awareness. And usually these practices are about, or particularly the Feldenkrais method, are about the individual. They are about the individual. And Feldenkrais talks about societies of, a, a future of societies of aware individuals. And, and, and aware individuals who not necessarily only experience their wholeness and their unity and their uh, their flow, but also who, who experience their, their own vulnerability, their own unfinishedness, their own um, incompleteness, or their, their their own resistance in themselves. It's 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 a kind of it's it's a it's not an idealism. It's a realism. It's a question. It's 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 a coming to yourself and. And, and asking what there is before, before you also ask what there could be. Um, so I've been involved also in, in questioning these practices. It's, is it enough to just do these self-changing, these self-transformational practices? Or do we need to, uh, let me rewind a little bit. These practices are very powerful. They are transformational. They are really changing yourself because they because they're honing into how we're changing and developing as human organisms anyway. They're using what Feldenkrais call, uh, to, calls organic learning principles. So 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 they are they are kind of transformative educational models. And then the question is, how can we use these models to not only um, work on the individual but also in groups or in in social contexts how can we develop models which are called perhaps social social somatics or critical somatics and um and then the door opens wide you know a door opens wide where you are um invited to explore these um these practices with people with groups with with vulnerable people with um in in social contexts um and that might mean that you don't always work with pleasant experiences. You know, very often we work in the Feldenkrais method with, with lightness and ease and, 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 and free flow and, and a sense of um, slowing down that everyone has time to experience their own, um, their own 
self-image and their own capacities in, in, in a positive way, in an I can way. And um, there are ways of, of, of how you can do this where you also introduce conflict, inner conflict into the world, conflict with each other, um, a, a different sense of dynamism, a much more fighting dynamism. And of course, you do need to set up boundaries. You do need to set up rules of engagement. You do need to set up rules of consent. Um, ultimately, we need to learn to be resilient in this world. We need to be learn to be kind. We need to learn to be loving. We need to learn to be open and giving and forgiving. But we also need to learn to be resilient. And 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 resilient means, in my understanding, um, to also and be able to engage with conflict and to understand conflict and 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 to step up when you need to step up and to step forward when you need to step forward. And to know when you need to step back and you know when you need to step forward. And um, so, wow. The, the, so that's one that resilience is one point. The other point is creativity. The, the, the very much in the Feldenkrais method and in the creative dance process where I'm coming from, they're guiding you really into seeing yourself differently, processes of allowing yourself to see yourself differently and to question the norm and to question your habits. So very often the lessons are constructed that you do things in theme and variation. So you do them the way you normally do them. And then you ask, well, what if you did them like this? And what if you did them like this? What if you didn't, did, what, what if you didn't do them at all? Or we, put, or we also work systemically in, in, in a way that we put spanners in the world. We use, we use perturbations. We, we're setting problems. And through the problems and problem solvings, we're coming to new solutions. So for me, for me um, the criticality in this work is the potential for resilience, resilience training, and the potential for um, a training towards, critic, uh, towards creativity. And creativity is really, really important in my uh, belief. The, the ability to do things differently, the ability to see things differently, that for me is at the heart of change making. If you cannot imagine yourself differently, if you cannot experience yourself, different, yourself differently, if you cannot act in different ways, how can you facilitate change? And I think on those levels, we're setting in an inductive way, not in a prescriptive way. I don't have the answers. I have the beginnings of processes with, the, with this work in an inductive way where we're inducing and introducing processes. We are, we, we are, um, we are fostering a ground for growth, communication, creativity, and change. And in that way, I felt very much at home also with what the concerns of the whole event were. That I feel, you know, that setting the ground and the tone for imagining change and, and envisioning change, and then also learning to enact change. God, that's a whole long, lengthy answer to a beautiful question. Thank you, Thomas. Um, just a quick question from Kate in the chat. She's asked if you see any connections with this type of work and systemic constellations, if you're familiar with that type Gosh, of work. I don't know systemic constellations. Is, is that the Hellinger work or, or, or is that... Um... Well, I, don't, I don't know where it comes. We've, we've just been doing some experiments with it in, in Hull, but it just struck me the experience of the movement in relation to each other. Part of the systemic what you do with systemic constellations, it's actually you, you're looking at an issue that someone brings and but people play different parts. So it might be patriarchy, the enclosures, you know, like uh, trauma. Um, it could be a building or anything. But what's fascinating about the process is it's not a role play. It comes through your body and it's something shifts in the space and then someone else shifts. So it's it. it, it it's it feels a bit magical but and it's in, it's incredible how you move through to seeing things in a different way it just it just struck me I, that was incredibly inspiring i i, I think you're doing better than i'm doing 
I, th I think this is already a development, a step, you know, this is already the kind of step, oh yeah, that's exciting, that's that kind of, it, 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 you're doing already that which I would like to do. Yeah. I'm not, we've Maybe. had facilitators, but it feels there's a connection there that's really interesting. I'm, yeah. I'm sure, I mean, you know, Feldenkrais was a Holocaust survivor. The work was developed in the 1960s, 70s as part of the human potential movement, but he also was a kind of anarchist and, and you know, it came out of a wish for social change and, and, and personal change and, and, and social change and, and therefore um, I, I think a, a, a lot of ethics in, in terms of choice making, give, giving people paradigms and giving, giving people um, objectives and capacities for choice making, you know, is I think giving people capacity for choice making is at the heart of the Feldenkrais method. And I think that's what you're talking about as well. Or if you're looking at kind of the work of Paulo Freire, or you're looking at, at the, the theater of the oppressed by, by, I cannot remember what his name is now, the, the, the Augusto Boal, yeah, which is very similar. He, he developed theater processes, which are um, constellations and where you then set alternative modes. And I think this, this being able to act differently and, 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 and testing that out, that is also at the heart of the Feldenkrais method, absolutely. In Thank fact, you. Um, Sam in the chat mentions yes. archetypal constellations, which um, relates to what Jeline was talking about with archetypes as well. So that might may be one example um, we can explore yes. um, along the lines you're talking about. Um, I'd, I'd be very keen to read up more on um, Feldenkrais if you fancied posting anything on the Campfire Network, Thomas. And well, I have published quite a lot also on Feldenkrais and critical social theory. And, and, and so I've, I'm, one of my kind of personal um, missions as an academic was to, to be, become, to foster this kind of critical somatics field and, and to look at um, drawing out the political and socially transformative potential of these works by placing the practices next to social theory. So the first thing I wrote was about Theodor's Adorno education after Auschwitz and looking at Adorno's educational theories in relationship to Feldenkrais. And then I, 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 I looked at Edgar Morin's Education for a Future, um, which is an UNESCO publication from, two, from 1999, wonderful, wonderful ecological pedagogy and I've looked at um, Cornelius Castoyadis social imaginary and, 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 and social theory. I'll, I'll put some links up of, of lit, interesting literature. Thanks. Um, Brilliant. Yeah, Dan and I were chatting away um, to each other on the chat um, privately saying we were hoping to split into groups, but we're actually running quite short of time. We've only really got five minutes left on the session and I know um, Dan has to go and move house as well. So you've got a good <laughs> week. <laughs> and thanks very much for your input. Um, so I was thinking maybe we could just pull a few threads together. And uh, Ken's had his hand up for a while, and as has Fred. So if, if you wanted to uh, come in and make a fairly swift point, both of you, that would be great. Ah, uh, yeah. I was hoping we were going to break into small groups. It is very hard to absorb all of this. Um, in general, yes, I am just outside Washington, D.C. As far as I can tell, I'm the only one from the United States here. The reason for that is I've known Pete for a long time. Um, and, you know, this is, uh, yeah, I just wish I could absorb all of this. It's, it's really hard to do that. I tried to take notes. That wasn't easy. Um, I do not represent the United States in any way, shape, or form. I am very not mainstream in this country. Um, uh, you know, I, I keep thinking basically, you know, to make it really short, we need deep systemic change. I do think Campfire is an example, just its existence is an example of how to start that because we're all communicating. We all have different opinions. Um, I, you know, uh, I, I find it very hard to deal with the conservatives in this country. I can't accept it as a militant environmentalist. They are almost all of them are opposed to that. Um, 
you know, like it, we need, like I said, we need deep systemic change. I wish I knew how to go about that. Um, I do not know what, God, what is this called? Something archetypical constellation. Never heard of that before. Um, I would probably leave this session with a lot of questions. I wish I could meet all of you in person. That, of course, is not possible. Certainly not now. Um, yeah, it, it, I wish I could say the session left me with more answers than questions, but I think it's leaving me with more questions than answers. It is how to continue from this point forward. And um, I do, oh, um, Claire, is that your name, your daughter? I think it would be really neat to have her and other young people participate in the Sunday gatherings that we've been having. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we can um, invite Ella to join. She's sticking her thumb up, so hopefully she'll be in on one or two of those. Hey, I just want to echo something Ken said, because it's something that came up from the weekend. There's a lot of jargon in systemic change. And in order for us to make the conversation accessible without becoming academics ourselves, is we have to find a ways to have these types of conversations in ways that kind of break down some of that jargon. Um, so I'm with you. I've also got more homework to do off the back of this, but that that plays into my own curiosity. But you're right. Um, but actually, I do believe that systemic change does, be does begin with better quality questions. And if, I think if we find the right questions, we'll start finding some of the right answers. So going away with questions isn't a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will see you on campfire, Mr. Dan. Uh, Thomas, are you on campfire also? Yes, he is. Yes. Okay, I'll find you there. Yeah, and I think um, uh, Fred, you had your hand up. Would you like to go? Well, next? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, really quick because I think I'm the only one person that was there that didn't say anything. Um, and yeah, I was just feeling a bit dead. So just listening to everybody bring it all back to life was, you know, really good. Um, it was great to sort of meet people with similar goals. I think that was a, you know, that was a great thing about it. Um, I really enjoyed Yale's uh, breathwork and uh, Thomas's Soma's stuff and Julene's archetypes and her poems and her music. Um, so that was really good. I did um, take the theme of wholeness away and I sort of tried it at work and dinner party uh, and various things where you know usually I'd sort of like well this this audience doesn't really need to hear about UFOs right now or whatever it was and uh, so I just said it anyway you know so that was interesting and um, also today I really wasn't feeling good so um, I tried Thomas's thing of having my palms up as I was walking down the street and it was quite interesting because I, I felt like people were expecting you know a certain reaction because they were my perception behaving in a certain way and I wasn't giving it to him. So that's all I got. Anyway, thanks. Every it was really good. Do you want to quickly qualify what the palms up thing was, Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were just experimenting with the, the archetypes in a way of, 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 of working with, with outward rotated hands and, 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 and gesturing with, with inward rotating hands and, what that and and lifting the hands up or putting the arms to hands down and what that what sort of feeling that gives they are kind of um late 19th century francois desart del sart um archetypical acting kind of exercises but that's a, a lot of that is 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 actually very true it's truthful you know there's a, there's a body language there's a psycho there's a psychophysical language of survival of defense and 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 receiving or of giving and and taking and and so on and so on that that the, how our organisms are constructed which give us a certain inner attitude so we were we were working with gesture and body attitude in order to then be able to articulate and notice what sort of inner attitude what sort of psychology that gives us and it was fun it was enormous fun i like her that i really enjoyed that session we're going to have to do another one of these online things with all of you different people. Yeah. I was going to propose that um, we haven't really sort of got into where do we go next? You know, what, what, what do people want? Where do we go from here? Which might be an opportunity to have another session and perhaps split into groups. I'd um, really like that. It would be great to be um, split into the smaller groups. I really enjoyed that. We did that before. Could we have 
some raised hands for those who would like to do another session. That's that looks like the majority are in favour. So yeah, I think we should have a look for a date when we can do that. Yeah, why am I so in sync with people in England? I still have to figure that out anyway. Kate, do you have your hand up? Yeah, just quickly. I mean, uh, it's amazing coming together in real life and I'd really like to explore planning another one. Because <laughs> I think there was something about the small, it being smaller as well, that was quite important, that it's a limited size. But then also the potential of doing some stuff online and it just I just remembered that Yale had said that maybe some breath work or, you know, ex exploring doing more stuff together online as well would be amazing in between yeah we're certainly planning to look into whether we can do something with breathwork so that's a conversation to be had um ab um just a quick one yeah um for me i, I enjoyed the weekend it was really great uh, with all the connections um but i'm finding that i'm getting really overwhelmed because there's just so much information so kind of getting together again to kind of think what do we do because it's like we know what's happening um but we need to figure out solutions and I guess because my brain works in terms of solutions um I'm struggling because I'm thinking what are the solutions how do we connect with other cells you know it's like we're we have our own everybody seems to just be on their own and there's no connection but it's huge so we need to connect but I guess maybe I need to trust the process that that will happen in time as we develop. But yeah, so. Thank you. Yes, that's something certainly to explore at the next session. Um, Dan, did you, any other comments from you to wrap up? Well, I think I have a shared sense of being solution focused. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting one because system change is holistic by nature and accordingly the types of conversation we're having here is helping to shape the culture within this group but actually by virtue of doing that we're shaping the culture around us uh, when people talk about society and culture um, and there's there is there is there is a groundswell of people over the particularly over the last couple of years who have starting to see things in the world that they didn't previously see and this kind of deep rooted power structure underpinned by corruption and all these other things and what's coming out of it in reaction is not only a seeking of different solutions and models the kind of practical sense but there is also the yearning for lots of the things we've talked about tonight, which is this deeper sense of humanity, because it's been absent within the institutions and the leaders that represent, supposed to represent the interests of the people and the planet. Uh, and as such, we must appreciate that this is a holistic game and uh, how we show up in the world is itself a solution. Um, but I'm with you on seeking the practical steps, um, but also take comfort from the fact that as people have shared tonight, there's lots of amazing things happening and it's about helping to join the dots between those things and find ways to actually amplify, fortify and support those people who are already starting to sprint with their ideas and then creating the environment for people who are looking for ways to contribute and uh, looking to find their place is to create kind of workshops and opportunities for them people to explore for themselves where they want to go. So I'm with you on that solution drive. You know, my, uh, the Elevate community will know that. And thanks to those, I want to say thank you to those from the Elevate community who've joined us tonight. I uh, appreciate all of those of you here on the call from Elevate and Campfire and elsewhere who weren't at the session. It can be quite difficult tuning in, hearing other people's experiences and trying to relate it to yourself. But I hope you've got a, an understanding of some of the things that we did at that weekend and how the journey may continue. Um, and I'm looking forward to continuing the conversation, both in terms of the practical sense of solution, as well as this deeper cultural shift that we're tapping into at the moment. So thank you for Pete for, for pulling this together tonight. Thanks, thanks very much, Dan. And uh, that word awareness keeps popping up for me. I think um, a society of aware individuals um, is what it's all about. And that was one thing that really stood out from Thomas's session and what he was talking about. 
I'd like to thank everyone for being so eloquent tonight and um, and being here and being present. And um, let's continue the conversation online. For those of you who haven't yet filled in the feedback form, I posted the URL a little bit up the chat. Um, please, we'd love your written, here it is again. Um, we'd love your written feedback on that. And uh, do join us on a Sunday Zoom next Sunday morning, 10.30. Uh, thank you again for your contributions. Um, everyone, have a good night. Good night, all. Big love. Thank you. Be well and stay safe, everybody. Good night. Thanks. Thank you. Good Bye. night. Wonderful. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. See you again soon. Yes. Cheerio, everyone. <laughs>